This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Hi, I'm Cindy Harris, and we love making this show available to you free of charge. If you'd like to help us keep it that way, make a contribution to our Karma Jar. For more information, visit our website. Tonight I've made these delicious tavern chicken pot pies for dinner. Now if you'd like to follow along with the recipe while I make them, just get your smartphone and scan the QR code here on the screen and the recipe will pop right up. Well, many years ago, my family and I were traveling on the eastern side of the United States, and we went into a really old tavern that served a delicious turkey pot pie. And the thing that was so amazing was instead of a traditional crust, they made a puff pastry crust. So I came home and immediately had to figure out how to recreate this recipe, and here it is. It's a wonderfully creamy chicken and vegetable base, and then on top a delicious crunchy puff pastry. I'm going to start by taking one onion and giving it a medium-sized chop and then I'll chop four ribs of celery and when I chop the celery I cut it in half and then I take the ribs and I cut them in thirds lengthwise sometimes fourths if they're really wide. I want to end up making the celery and the onion about the same medium sized chop. And then two carrots. I'm going to take the ends off and then I'll cut it in half. And when I'm cutting a carrot, I like to have a flat surface. So I'm going to cut it in half lengthwise and that way it doesn't roll on the board uh, for me. And then I'll take and cut it into some sticks and then cut it into the same medium sized chop as the onions and the celery. I want to have everything saute at about the same rate. Now we'll have a few other vegetables to get ready in a little while, but let's go over to the stove and we'll start sauteing our first three vegetables. I have a large pot over medium high heat. I'm going to put in four tablespoons of butter and let that get melted. And then I'll add my onion my celery, and my carrot. I'm gonna let these saute for about 10 minutes and I'll stir them every now and then. And then I wanna get a few other ingredients ready. I have a cup of white wine, four cups of chicken broth, a cup of peas, and you can either use fresh or frozen. I'm using frozen today. I've sliced up two cups of mushrooms, and then I have some little red potatoes that I actually grew in my garden. And I'm going to chop those up, again, about the same size as the carrots and the celery and the onion. And I want to end up with about a cup. Now you can see after 10 minutes, I have some nice brown bits at the bottom. I'm going to pour in my wine. And I'm going to use my wooden spoon to scrape up those little brown bits at the bottom because that is really good flavor. And then once I see I've picked all of that up, and then I'm going to add my peas, my mushrooms, my potatoes, and my four cups of chicken broth. Give that a stir. Bring the heat up to high, and I want to bring this broth to a boil now. And while that's coming to boil, I've got two cups of heavy cream, three garlic cloves that I've minced, and now I'm going to mince up a shallot. Now this is a shallot. It looks very much like a little onion. It's much sweeter though. And when you cut open a shallot, you'll see it's usually two pieces. And for this, I want to cut up both pieces. So I'll peel it cut it twice this way, just like I would do an onion, run some cuts into it, and then cut it in a fine mince. And I'll do the same thing with the other half. Now out of the garden, I've picked a little bit of parsley and some thyme, and I want to chop up about two tablespoons of fresh parsley and a teaspoon and a half of fresh thyme leaves. And I'm just gonna pull these little leaves off. If you run your hands backwards, they just kind of fall right off the stem. But we don't wanna use the stem. And then I do like to run my knife through those little leaves. 
And now we'll take these over to the stove and add them to our pot. And now that this is boiling, I'll add my heavy cream, my garlic, my shallots, and my herbs. I'll season it with some salt and pepper. I'll put this on a medium-low heat, and I'll let this simmer for about 10 minutes. And now I'm going to get my chicken ready. And I have some leftover roast chicken, and I'm using both uh, dark meat and white meat. I'm going to chop it up until I get about three cups of chicken meat. And now I'll add the chicken, stir that in, and let it simmer on low for about five minutes. And I'm gonna take three tablespoons of cornstarch, mix that with just enough water till it dissolves, and then I'll put it into the chicken mixture. Now, once the chicken mixture has slightly thickened, you have a couple of choices. So you'll want to get either some individual um, dishes like this, or you can do it in one big casserole if you'd like. Now there's enough to do at least six to eight servings, depending on how big your ramekins are. But what you'll wanna do is just bake as much as you're going to be eating that night. So for example, tonight I just need dinner for three, but I wanna use the rest tomorrow night. I'm not gonna put the puff pastry on those until tomorrow night, because if you cook puff pastry and then put it in the refrigerator, it just gets soggy, and I don't want that. So tonight I'm just going to bake these three off. Now I've taken my um, chicken off of the stove. It's still nice and hot. And at this point, you will want to taste it and make sure it has enough salt and pepper to your liking. And then I'm going to ladle in just about one and a half ladlefuls. Now you'll notice I've put these dishes on a rimmed baking sheet. That will make it much easier to get it in and out of the oven. Now I'm gonna get my puff pastry ready. Now, this frozen puff pastry has two sheets to a package, and it's best to defrost it in the refrigerator overnight if you can. So I'm going to take it out, and I'll probably use half tonight and then the other half tomorrow, so I'll put this back in the refrigerator. On my board, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little flour, and then I'll open the sheet up. Now, I won't need to roll this out. The thickness is just fine the way it is. I wanna make sure that it moves well on my board. Now again, depending on the size of your ramekins, it depends how much puff pastry you're going to be using. Now this is one of my extra bowls, so I know that this is about the right size. Then I'm gonna turn it upside down on my puff pastry, and with a knife, I'm gonna cut it just a little bit bigger than the bowl, about another half inch all the way around. I was able to get two rounds out of one sheet, and then with the scraps, I'm gonna roll this out to make my third. And when you're rolling out, just make sure that you get it about the same thickness as the others. And that looks about right. Now I'm going to take my rounds and I'm just gonna lay them on top of my chicken mixture. Now I'm going to make a little egg wash to brush on the top. So in this small bowl, I have one egg and I'll put in one teaspoon of water. And with my fork, I'll mix that up real well, and then I'll take my brush and I'm gonna lightly brush a coating of wash on top of the pastry. Now you wanna have a very light hand because you don't wanna press the dough into, so it pushes down on that um, chicken mixture. We, we, we want the liquid of the chicken to be underneath the pastry. And if you press too hard, it'll pop up and it will have troubles puffing that way. And I like to get some kosher salt, which is a nice big crystal salt, and sprinkle some of that on the top. I love that salty flavor on that puff pastry. Now I've preheated the oven to 400 degrees, which is a pretty hot oven, but we need that heat to make this pastry puff. So I'll put these in for about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, keep an eye on them because we wanna pull them out once that puff pastry is nice and golden brown. 
Now they puffed up nicely. Now let me show you how I like to serve them when they're individual like this. I take my plate and I like to put a little beverage napkin on top of it. That way it doesn't slide around. And then if you have some tongs that have these rubber tips, I'd get those. If you don't, you could wrap a rubber band around each side. You just want something that's gonna not slip when um, you grab the ramekin. And then I take my spatula and I just pick it up like this, nice and safe and put it right on the napkin. Well, if you'd like to try these tavern chicken pot pies at home, just go to our website and go to the easy entertaining show notes and I'll have the recipe there for you. Don't forget to join us on Facebook. And as always, if you have any ideas or questions for me, please send me an email. I'll see you next time.